In the Lotus Sutra, I believe it's in the second chapter, the authors indicate that the Buddha appeared in this world for one very great reason. And then essentially the reason is explicated in terms of three or four phrases that essentially communicate the notion that he wanted to bring the Dharma into the world for sentient beings, for human beings in particular, so that they might know the Buddha knowledge, so that they might become enlightened, so that they might become Buddhas. Well, I want to comment on two different great Kamakura Japanese masters, Shinran and Nishran, who most of you will most likely be familiar with, and to indicate what each of those teachers thought was the reason that the Buddha appeared in the world, the primary reason. Shinran uh, believed that the reason the Buddha appeared in the world was to make us aware of Amida's pure land and of Dharmakara's vow to save all beings who had faith in him and relied upon his vow rather than upon their own self-power. Um, Nishran thought that the Buddha appeared in the world in order to preach the Lotus Sutra. And so, are these two things really in contradiction? Uh, both are right. In other words, as Nishran says, uh, the Buddha came into the world to preach the Lotus Sutra. But then you have to look at, well, what is the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra? And the essential teaching, we would have to say, is in chapter, uh, chapter 16 regarding the eternal life of the Buddha. And I know there's controversy perhaps on this point, but the question is, who is the eternal Buddha? And I would put forward the notion, as I have in, in another video, that at least insofar as I would like to think about it, that that eternal Buddha is in fact Amida. So he, he came into the world to share with us um, the eternal existence of Amida Buddha, the fact that Amida is there as a source of comfort for us, and that we have the capability of being reborn in his pure land, um, i.e. to become Buddhas. Namo Mita Buddhas. Namo Mita Buddhas. Namo Mita Buddhas.